All right, now we'll move on to some of the core systems that you'll encounter when you're developing a data center program. And one of the first things you'll, you'll notice is there's a sea of acronyms. There's every single system has its own acronyms and the subsystems have their acronyms. Um, and the thing that became very apparent to me, I went in there thinking oh, it was just a warehouse with some server racks, but actually there's a whole host of ME going on and ME really is the critical uh, discipline for, server, for um, data centers. Uh, the two common styles you'll see in more built up areas, they'll just look like office blocks uh, with cooling plant on the roof, generators with a, gant a gantry or separate building and transformers contained within. The thing that will give this away if you're walking by is you'll notice there's no windows, although to be honest, a lot of people pass by and wouldn't think twice about this. The second style for the larger installations is a campus where they'll have separate uh, buildings for different plant. They'll have external utility lards for generators, transformers, uh, coolers and different power supply equipment. And as we touched on earlier, there's various innovations where there's underwater data centers, barges, uh, combined with, new, uh, with renewable energy, and things like that. But actually, once you start getting inside a data center, you'll see a lot of the features look very similar between all the different types of layouts you'll see. Um, so starting off with the white space, this is really where the servers are kept. And essentially, as the name implies, it's just a big white hall. It is where uh, servers will be put in either by the developers or the, or the tenants later on and just filled up with racks and we'll look at the cooling of these racks later. Uh, cooling galleries are separate. Uh, they have these CRH units, again we'll explain this later, that cool the uh, servers. Um, chilled water rises, this is what supplies the cooling water to the um, these cooling galleries. Uh, there'll be a circulation area that kind of en encapsulates the whole thing. This is a service corridor for people to access and also for a lot of services to run. It might vary a bit depending on the building layout, but there'll typically be some circulation area. And then on this particular building, they had containerized UPS's switchgear and transformers, but on some buildings, this, each of those will have a separate room to contain them. And then again, generators, they, this was a, uh, a gantry system, but sometimes they'll be inside a, a separate building or just in a utility lard. It really depends where they're set up. Um, the scope implications for this for building layouts is imagine you're the developer and you want to install just two of these data halls. You could either you'd look at comparing installing say hall one and hall two, so north and south on this picture on floor one, or imagine you've got a second floor and you could just install the north and floor one and the north and floor two. This would mean you'd only have to install half of your chilled water risers, and it's things like this that developers will look at, going how can we reduce the build time just for getting some of the building ready? How can we reduce the initial costs? So that'll always be on their mind and it'll probably come through in the program. Uh, something else you should keep in mind when you're sequencing is the, the cutaway on the right for the uh, corridor. There'll be a very strict order of what's at the top of the corridor, what's at the bottom. And generally you want to install those services as they happen. So in this case, the smoke extract duct will be the first thing to go in. What's not shown here is any of the cooling water supply, but that will have to go in last because um, you won't want to be putting it on top of any of your power cable distribution or, or other um, ducting and things like that. 